led you to coach on the defensive side of the ball in your career? Was there any moment, um, any piece of interest that really kind of got you geared towards that way? Or um, was it just kind of one of those circumstances of your first fit? Man, you know, I, I, I'm born and raised Oklahoma, born and raised coach kid, you know, and my dad comes from uh, split back beer, flex bone, uh, running, run the triple midline, et cetera, you know, and so I'd, I'd grown up watching that forever. Uh, my uncle, his brother, was was an, is an air raid. You know, he he they throw the mess out of it. You know, he's working for the Oklahoma State Association right now. But when he was coaching, they were four wide, five wide, chunking all over the yard. And for me, I grew up in an offensive family. Well, played Division two college in, in Oklahoma, and played outside linebacker, played safety. You know, and and uh, um, uh, did that for four years. And, and I graduated in December, graduated my bachelor's in, in history, in history education in December. Well, bad time as a teacher trying to find a job, right, Christmas break. So here I am, graduated with a degree. What do I do? Well, the guy I played for, the guy I played for in college, he and, and the head coach at a place called Henderson State University, okay, Henderson State University, they were uh, – they'd gone to high school years. They were, they were boys. They were best friends. And Henderson State University was looking for a, a GA, a defensive GA. I call up my head coach, say, hey, man, you know, it's December. I have a job. Can you help me? And I'm in Arkadelphia about three days later, Arkadelphia, Arkansas. And I take this job almost sight unseen. I mean, I show up and, I, yeah, I'll be there. This guy don't know me. I don't know him. I mean, and so I go to Henderson State University as a GA, coach of secondary, and, and literally with, with the cot. I did not have an apartment, didn't have a house. My office, I luckily had an office. That was my domain. Now, the good news was I had no bills, no rent. I got to eat in the cafeteria three times a day. It was great. And I learned more ball, more mentorship, more leadership than you can, you know, than you can shake a stick at, you know. And, and um, it was the first time I was ever away from home. And so I've done a lot of podcasts talk about that. But, but for me – I was coaching secondary for two years in, in a four down front, and that's just kind of where it led. You know, so I've been on the defense side of the ball since that time. And so when, when me and dad and, and, our, and my uncle get together, you know, holidays and gatherings, we all draw on napkins and they're trying to do this and I'm trying to stop it. So um, that, that's kind of where, where it started and really where it's evolved. Now, coach, someone who's never seen your defense before. How would you describe it? Yeah, you know, I, I think, I hope, I think somebody would say that, man, they, they, are, they do a lot of things. And I say, I preface that by saying this. I want to look multiple, but to our kids, it's all the same. You know, and teaching same as, you know, that one on first down, you make it an odd front. You know, you make it odd front too high course. You know, the, the, on second down, you may get four-man rush, and we may play four under 3D. On third down, we're going to get in the package. We're all left. We're standing up, you know. So, so for me, I want to take pride in um, you can't just sit there and first down, third down are the same. That we're always going to be in an odd front or always going to be too high, you know. I, I want the, the offense coordinator to go, man, they're multiple, you know, to the fans, to, to, to the crowd. You know, I want them to see that, you know, they fly the football. They're lined up properly. They execute. They communicate. And they're at the point of attack, ready to make a play. You know, that's what I that's what I want the outside world to see. So those are my two. Uh, what do you want people to see? The opponent, you got you got a plan prepared. The outside world that we're lined up, we execute. We look like we have a clue and know what's going on. Now, is there anything when you're looking at your your style of defense and, and you know? You've obviously seen there's been several different trends in offensive football. Uh, you, you said that you've had you know a lot of time going against uh, you know air raid and, and spread type formations. So when you're developing this philosophy of football, has there been any kind of impact based on the styles of offenses that you're seeing most often that are leading you to now have more answers to that in kind of your base uh, packages for defense? Yeah, sure. You know, since I was playing. And, and, and as I've evolved as a coach, you know, being in higher, higher classification, Oklahoma and Texas, everybody's running Saturday offense, right? Everybody's running zone, GH, quick game, taking shots, you know? 
a, a lot of times I'll get DMs on Twitter from guys up in Michigan or wherever else. They're like, Coach, now how do you stop 32 personnel? I'm like, play with 15 guys. I mean, you know, so, um, you know, to be honest, I don't envy you guys who see all that double tie, I and wing T. And, mm, we can talk about it, but the stuff I see is, is um, you know, I might run the same thing, but it's the same idea. What I lose sleep over is that guy going to Texas and the running backs going to like FCS, you know, that in DFW, you know, there's 4 million people. Houston, there's 4 million people. Well, I come from a state that has 3.5 in the whole state. Okay. And so what I lose sleep over is, oh my gosh, how do we stop that guy? Right. You know, people are running the same stuff out of formation and one back and two back. Um, that that's not really a head scratch. And sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, I've got to, well, we need to do this, we need to do that. But my saving grace is a lot of people do the same stuff. You know, so evolution and involvement has been, hey, everybody's in three by one, right? Everybody's in trips. Well, how do we handle that one receiver by himself? So what's everybody want to do? They want to spread you out, check the box, run it versus good box, throw it against the bad box, Right. So one of our involvements that I think about is creating a four-man rush, different ways. Two, covering up that extra receiver. I just can't tell my corner, hey, man, good luck. Hope you, hope you win against that guy who's going to OU in Texas. Okay, so that's, that's a few of the evolutions, right, that, that I have found in our defense. And, you know, another one that's big is I grew up in a, in a four-down front, you know. Uh, you know, when, at, when I was in interstate, we were in four-down. My first two years at, at Broken Arrow, we were in a four-down front. and We were over, under, a lot of plenty stoops, uh, Venables back in the day, OU, you know, when, when they were there at Oklahoma University. And, and we've evolved in the past, well, 2015, we really sold out to playing four eyes, playing a tight front. And, and it has changed my world. Now, does that have weaknesses? Yeah, it all does. Three stack, four, two, four. They all got weaknesses. They all do. But there's a whole lot of strength within the three, four tight front. Let's talk a little bit about that 3-4 tight front, uh, Coach. And so, um, you know, I, I'm going to kind of turn things over to you a little bit here in terms of just, you know, explaining kind of the, the basic tenets of that, you know, tight front and, um, you know, some of the ways that you teach it, some of the different adjustments that you would have to maybe some ways that coaches commonly try to attack it. But kind of turn things over to you here, and we'll uh, do some follow-ups as you go through your presentation. Yeah. Um, you know, when – when we moved, you know, one of the reasons we moved to a four I zero four I, okay, was schematic. You know, I know, and and what and don't get me wrong, one of the reasons we moved was because we have more nickel dime outside linebacker guys that we can put there versus three techniques, right? That was one of, but it wasn't our main one idea that hey, we're going to get the three four because hey, we're not four down line. It, it wasn't that. We wanted to get in a in a three four four I zero four I because of the angles, because it was hard on offenses, right? Okay, it's easy to block back a shade. It's easy to block back a three technique and wrap the guard, right? It's angles, okay? Um, you know, and we wanted to get out of that because, you know, people were spreading us out. It was kind of, you know, 10, 12 years ago, people were kind of spreading out, getting two by two and trips, and we were still on the four down front. We were hipping and moving that mic back around, right, if it was trips. Or the nickel will, right, the star and the will backer, they were out trying to cover down and play apex defender, right? Well, in a four-down front, there was a shade three, which is an A-gap bubble, and a shade five, which is a B-gap bubble. So one of the things we got tired of was, was having to auto the front, meaning all having, having to auto the front, the stunts. How are we going to cancel the A-gap? How are we going to cancel the bubbles, you know? And so that was one of the evolutions of, of schematic of why we got into the 4 i 0 4 i you know, the bubbles are closed, <laughs> you know. Now, I know the argument is, well, Coach, you don't have a five technique on both sides. Yeah, yeah I get it. You're right, okay. But our outside linebacker becomes a five technique, whether we want to bring him or whether we want, you know, whether it's based off the back or whatever it may be. Um, that reason one we went to is because of schematic, because it's hard to block, right? It's hard. It screws up your old line rules. You know, and I, I, I get a kick out of guys on Twitter, offensive coordinators that, Every time they draw on a napkin, what's it, what is it? It's a four down front. Exactly. It's a four shade. Uh, it's a three shade with, with, a, with either a four two box or a four one box, right? It may be four one or four two, but guess what? It's still a shade three because why, man? It's easy. 
It's gap. It's angles. It's rare that people draw it against four I zero four I because it's like, uh, now we got to put in double fold. You know, I don't know. We might need to read, you know, we might have to arc that four I. We don't really arc people. That's not in our arsenal. Okay. So that was one of the top reason as to why we went to, to play in tight front, you know, um, you know, the other one obviously was personnel, right. Was, was our, our plethora of nickel dimes. You know, I was in a six, eight high school, man, you know, 1200 boys in the, in, you know, 2,500 students and half of them, 1200, 1300 boys, you know, and nine through 12, you've got 200 ish kids, nine through 12 in your program. And again, more, more dudes that were, nickel jack star type of guys that we put out there so yeah it was personnel number three know your opponent right sun Tzu, you know know thy enemy right well what was the enemy doing to us they were spreading us out 10 personnel you know find a way to, to to get that that three by one that x by himself we had to evolve and figure out a way to bracket him so we just couldn't leave our corner hey good luck over there you know and, and so Moving that jack or our boundary outside linebacker, moving him out and kind of giving that yes, no, man, don't look very good, you know, without changing our run fits. And, you know, because it's different when you're playing a three, five versus you're playing a four eye and a walk off jack. That's different. Okay. Um, and so, again, those were kind of our top three of why I can give, I can give you top. 714 reasons of, of why we went to it but those were really our top three of, of why we went to it you know and the four is like okay how do we build around it how do we formation it you know because it was different you know and, and people's like well what do you do with a three-man surface you know it base day base day one day two we're gonna stay in the four eyes zero four eye now we may go a four eye shade four eye we're gonna shade but we're gonna play four eyes okay and we'll get to play head force we'll do that but that's day later that's that's later and so we had to figure out how we lined it you know we always played a six or in a three technique to a three-man surface now you went from a four eye to who's the c-gap player it's the mic you keep the box and use the eight yard free safety i mean what do you what do you do and so that was the i say headache that was the most fun the headache because it was different but that was one of the most fun and one of the, the best evolutions to coach is going from a four down to a three down and, and not having to say, all right, Will, you got to cancel the A-gap and you got to pirate or tag or do pop or do something with the front because it's two by two and we're asking you to be 4-3. Now, we're 4-1 box, we're 4-2. Because from a secondary standpoint, you're saying, okay, 4-2. Yeah, you got the overhang, the star nickel guy to the field, but to the boundary, you're 2 over 2. You know, your mic's in the 30, your will's in the 10. And you get doubles, there's a corner of safety over there to play two. Well, you can throw stick to two all day, right? So we couldn't get in a 4-2 box. We got in a 4-3 or a 4-1. We hit both backers. Um, and so that's another reason why we got into a 3-4. Because when you're two by two, I want you to think about this. You're four I, zero, four I, Mike, Will, in 30s. I'm five in the box for your five linemen. My nickel, strong safety, and corner are three over two to your twins. My jack free safety and corner are three over two to your twins. Pre-snap, I can't get any better. I've got the bubbles closed, right? I'm not playing fives. I'm not playing five zero five. I'm playing four I zero four I. Mike Will in 30s. And then the other evolution was how we run fit it. That was different. That took some concentration, some headaches, and some that doesn't make sense. And then it finally just clicked. So I don't mean to ramble because I could, but those are kind of the spiels of why and how we went to playing three down. Uh, don't you think, don't you think as a guy who grew up in a, in a four man front, uh, you just, did you ever feel like you just had a sense of freedom when you went to a three man front? Like all of a sudden you had all these pieces to this car and you're like, wait a second. You're, you know, you, do you get what I'm saying? Like in a four man front, there's really only a one way you can play certain formations. Well, we can do this, but we have to do it this way to, to be safe. When you go to a three-man, it's, well, we could do this, this, or this, depending on the down, the distance, and personnel. And now, all of a sudden, I went from six solutions to one problem to, you know, from, well, there's one solution, kind of, because of one big problem. Did you ever feel that? I mean, in your coaching, how did you get those six really good – when you made the switch and you are like, well, now I got six different solutions to this problem. 
then how do you get down to one? How did you, how do you work yeah. with that? I know that's kind of probably what you're alluding to the headache, but that had to be a headache, didn't it? Y- yes. Oh my. Yes. Because again, ask any true four down guy, what do they want? They want a six and a three to the three man surface. <laughs> right. Okay. You may play a nine and come under on a base block and play, you know, nine jam seven. Like you may do that, but you're going to get a three technique to the three man surface. And then you get guys like Coach Willie who's going to trap my three-tech. Then he's going to read my three-tech. And then he's going to he's gonna log him, what we call log. And then now it's like in three plays, he's done three things to three-tech, and the kid's going to quit. He's right. like, I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, it's and, tough. And that's where, you know, I'll give 11 personnel as an example, right, when we get tied in down. That was one of the first – because, you know, we can all align to two-by-two two and three-by-two, like tr- twins and trips. Like, okay, cool. How do we align to three down surface when there's not a D lineman in the C gap, right? <laughs> of course, our first thought was like, what? Okay, hey, let's just slide the front and play a five and a shade. Wait, time that no, that's now we're in single gap. Like now we're getting the bubble game back again. Five shade, there's a bubble in the B gap. Shade, A gap, four I. There's a bubble in the A gap. Okay, that was out. Okay, then we said, okay, so who's got the C gap? And we first doing this, we were moving our jack, our boundary. He was our adjuster. We were adjusting that guy, oh, my, all over the place, right? So we thought, okay, we'll just adjust everything with him. And we have. And we still can and will do that, okay? So we were still playing 4-I, 0-4-I, four and our jack, who was the boundary guy, had to go find a tight end and play that 6, 6-I, six so whatever you want to call it nowadays, right? We figured out, man, we're traveling him a whole lot. Let's not get out of, you know. Then we, what we call boss, backers over strong side, B-O-S-S, right, where the might becomes a C-gap play, right? Let's say it's Trey, right? Okay, so it's, you know, center guard, tackle, tight end, there's twins to tight end side, right? So we were going to boss it. And what we found out was, hey, that's just the same as if it's trips. The front stays the same because that was what was one of the big things we went to. We did not want to move the front. We got tired of all the pirates and the pops and the tags and all the stuff we had to tell the backers, hey, you got to cancel the A-gap. We didn't want to keep doing that. That was the reason one of why we got out of this. And so what we found was Trey, remember, center guard, tackle, tight end, is just trips. So what's the Mike going to do? He's going to quote Apex, the end man, and number three, which is putting him in what gap? The C gap. Right, so we told the Mike, "Look, dude, and base day one defense with our seventh graders. Where's three? One, two. Okay, tight ends three. So what's that tell you? Apex between three and the end. You know the tackle. Where would that put you? The C gap. Boom. There you go. Right. So just in that realm, right there. Okay. And then we found out. Well, what if we keep the twenty backers, the thirty backers, and move the free safety over to play like C, you know, C gap seven yards? And now he's a C gap player." Done that. And so you talk about the keys, the car, putting all these parts together. As we started writing it down on the board, we went, oh, my word, how many answers have we found to playing Trey? You know? Yeah. And, and because that's, that's what people are trying to find on us is, okay, how are they going to treat the three-man surface? Well, it's two by two. Like, you know, it's pro twin. But people love Trey. And rightfully so. I get it. You don't want to move the front. You don't want to go a five shade to the tight end. I get it, and we do, we have, but I've also got tons of them. A lot of answers we've used the past six years of how we treat Trey, you know. And so you talk about the keys to the car and putting all the pieces together and making it go, and that has been a lot of fun. As we get on the board and we look and go, whoa, we found that many answers. And I'm not saying you can't in a four down. Okay, if you strive long enough, and try, yeah, but the stuff you can do out of a three down, whoa. That was incredible and stuff that we found the first year. And years past, years moving on, of all things we can do in the involvement of, of just handling 11 personnel, you know. And I've done clinics to where, you know, I spoke to Glazier a couple of times where how many ways have we handled three by one? You know, there was a game one night where I called 13 three by one checks. Okay. When I mean 13, I mean either a two high variation or a single high variation. Right. I don't mean cover zero, cover one. No, no, no. 13 different checks in one ball game of just corner, safety, safety, corner of how we were handling three by ones. Okay. 
and the evolution and the, the, the teaching and the install and the implementation of our three, four and our coverages. And we're still learning, you know, before I sell the book on the three, four, right? Before, so if you're watching this, it's changed our world. It's changed our, and it has, you know, and, and I think it's also changed the world of offense coordinators because they can't just sit there and go, dang, it's really easy to block back a shade. Now what? If you're going to sing on the nose all night, thank you. And you're no, you're, your center better be somebody. But if he's not and I win 50 and you win 50, well, guess what? We just pushed all night. Whereas I block back on the zero and your center may not be as good as my zero, but guess what? Just by based on angles, you're going to win seven out of 10 or eight out of 10. So like well, zero playing there has been a double nightmare. Well, so anyway, I don't mean around, but that that's chapter one of the evolution game. No, that's a good segue because, you know, I look at this a lot of times from an offensive perspective because that's just where I deal with most of my time and, and my end of the ball. But so when I'm coming up and I'm thinking about all of this, I'm thinking about all the different ways that offensive coordinators try to, you know, attack these type of fronts. The most common one you're going to see when you're doing some research, so if you just go and do a quick Google search, because early on in my career, this is one of the things I did, is how do you attack the tight front or how do you attack a, you know, four I, zero, four I? you get common answers. And, and one of the most common answers I get is a lot of times is, is inside zone. And so that's why you see the popularity of the inside zone um, kind of becoming a little bit more prevalent in, in high school offenses. We're even starting to see it a little bit around here uh, as more teams start to diversify their form of defense. From your experience in running your style of defense, what are the most common ways that teams try to attack um, the three, four variation that you've been kind of explaining to us? Yeah, so we're talking about attack game, you know, and I'm, let's talk run game. For, for starters, you know, like I said, one of the reasons we went to four hours, zero, four hours, because I'm tired of people running A gap and B gap power. Right? Okay. So I also got tired of exactly that. The guard pulling. I got tired of it. Now, do people still pull the guard? Yes. But they got to like hinge the tackle and block back to the center. Okay. So they're telling the center, block back to the four eye. Well, who's got the backside linebacker? Nobody. Or you run dart, right? You back block the guard, you run dart. Well, okay, where's the dart going? It's going all the way to the C gap where I want it. My outside backer, my, in, my inside backer is going to spill it, right? So how are people attacking it? You know, one of the ways is double fold, right? Again, I talked about that. You can If you can zero the center all night, I'll tip my cap to you. Hey, you win, right? But double fold, block out the four eyes with the guards, wrap the tackles under, right? Here's the deal. You know, obviously you didn't see it against the four down front. Okay, but for you, and I, maybe you have this in the Arsenal's the offensive guy, right? But is it your day one install? No. I've yet to talk to an offense coordinator where it's like, yeah, absolutely, double folds are our day one install, right? So that's how people are trying to combat this, but they have to put it in for us. For me, that's a win, right? Inside zones, inside zone. Counters count. Like your rules are your rules. I, I get it. But double folds, something you have to work. Like, it's something you got to work on Saturday and Sunday, or maybe during the offseason, because, you know, you, you us in the conference or the district. I get it. But that's one of those things that people are trying to, to combat us. That's one, okay? Two is um, the arc game. You know, maybe you call it midline or whatever, arc or a four-eye, right? And we have a base way to do it, but we've played that four-eye. We've chased it. We've sat it. We've run to the quarterback. We've done all sorts of – and I tweeted this out the other day that – that they were, it wasn't power, it was like power arc. Like it wasn't power read, it was like downhill. You know, I tweeted this out the other day. And we we ran the quarterback that week, or we ran to the quarterback that week on a pool. You know, so lots of people saying, okay, you're going to, we're going to read and arc the four eye, great, but you don't know what we're going to teach our four eye that week. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Well, how often do you read, if you're, you know, think about it, if you got a four down front, what are you going to do? You're not going to read the shade. You're going to inside beer block the five technique, right? And so, so you know, I get it. You're telling your tackle, you're telling your 16-year-old tackle, look, you're going to arc out to that guy. Yes, you can get that done in 30 seconds. I'm with you. But, again, it's another block, something you have to put in on Friday or, you know, on Saturday, Sunday game plan for Friday night, right? And that may be within your rules. And it probably is. Look, dude, you got a four eye and a jack arc. You got a shade and a five, inside release. I get it. Those are your rules, Right. But now you're telling quarterback, hey, remember last week against so-and-so, it was a shade five? Yeah, well, now it's a four. You're going to read that guy now. 
Okay. So I think probably the biggest two is the art game. But here's the deal. You know, unless you're like a triple team, and that's it. We see art once a night, twice a night. It's not something that, that I lose sleep over. Like, it's not something like, oh, yeah, they're going to run arc, and now they're going to do it 25 times. They're going to run double fold, but they're going to run it twice a quarter. You know? So those are probably the biggest two I've seen in the evolution of running the tight. You know? Um, you know, starting, starting to see, I call it pin pull, buck sweep, whatever, you know, where people are trying to pull the guards. But, again, Who's got the backside linebacker? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so you know, you, you get one back or two back or, or whatever it is, and you try to create three man surface. Yeah, yeah. But even buck sweep, pin pull, whatever you want to call it, still not great because how do we account for that guy? Okay, so those are probably the top three that people are trying to combat against us. So, what do you teach your jack when the tackle leaves, right? So, if it's Guard tackle counter, right? Or it's it's dart game. So you got your jack and he's apex, right? If say let's say you're seeing a tray or a trip surface, right? So your jack's away, and you probably have a call for him, right? Because he's sort of free. So if you're not gonna bracket or you're not gonna send him, okay, so he's kind of in between. Where is he starting? And then when he sees the tackle goal, what's his responsibility? Quarterback, yeah. you just haven't played quarterback. Yeah, so if you guys don't mind. If this is okay, uh, jump on the whiteboard for you. If that's okay. Um, you know, you talk about you talk about our jack, right? Um, yep. You know, well, probably be good if I got a market work, right? All right. So you know, for us, let's just put the the, 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 top, the tail back there, okay? Now, now our jack, because he's away from the back, right? Okay, it's our boundary, our weak side linebacker. Yes, okay. Whether I've got it, now, again, let's say I've got, you know, two by two on here. You know, it's a deuce set, right? Okay. Well, for us, you know, I talked about that, that, yeah, earlier you're playing a shade five and you've got the five, you know, you got the five technique set, but your will's out here to play the B gap. You know what I'm saying? Well, now you already have a guy in the B, in the 4i, okay, it's a numbers game, right? So, again, in the box, I'm two for two, but you got to account for who? There's my plus one. How do I count him as plus one? Coach said it was three over two earlier. You said you were one, two, three over those two. Correct. I, you're right. However, when I know the back is away, we use what we call trigger rules. Trigger is our turn that says, all right, pre-snap, before we're ready to go, pre-snap, I know the back is away from me. And I know if I get ball in the belly, I get the mesh right there, I'm going to trigger. I'm going to become the five technique. Okay? So all bets are off. Coach, what is play action? Then keep going. Okay? You become like a four-man rush. Then we call a four-man rush. No. Can we? Yes. This is day one, drop eight, install defense. Okay? So we're telling our jack, number one, pre-snap, where's the back? He's away. That means I'm going to be the trigger player. I'm going to trigger. I'm ready to go. Ball in the belly. When I get inside zone, whatever it may be, he doesn't care what one block scheme it is. He knows that he's a lever player or a box player. He's going to box all pulls, okay? And he's going to trigger in the C gap, okay? So that's what we tell our Jack on just on regular inside zone day one. So those one, two, three, four, five – six, there become my fitters, right? Notice I've not even talked about our nickel, Sam, star, whatever you want to call it, okay? And we're not using him, like, and that misconception. People think you have to max, max fit the run in the, in, the, in the tight front. False. You don't, okay? You know, people think, oh, yeah, I've got to use both backers, and, yeah, you can send them, and you can double edge, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's day one. Day one, Okay. We're not going to use, okay, we're not going to use our Sam Star, whatever guy you want to call him, okay, in this run fit right here, okay? So we can we can kind of get into that and delve into that world later. But the, the question was, how do I treat the jack? Pre-snap, where's the back? Two, I become the edge box setter with the back 
on the mesh. Coach, what's your you know day one install of how you're going to align uh, to three by one? Because you're going to see yeah. a lot of teams, you know, like you said, get into three by one to try to attack this, uh, whether it be out of tray or just you know your traditional three by one. Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, it's kind of funny. You asked me that question, but I'm going to show you how we line the two by two and how it remains the same, the three by one within the box. Okay. So our first avenue that we go, like I said, I'm going to draw a two by two to start. Again, is we're in four eyes, zero and a four eye. Okay. Jack, Will, Mike, and our Nick. Okay. So again, our Mike, Will are in the 30s. Okay. Our nickel and jack are apex, right? Apex two in the end, man. Okay, we're going to play two high quarters, some type of two high, you know, cover four idea, right? And I know the question was three by one. I'm going to get there. Now, I'm going to show you how, let's just say they put three by one in the field. Now I'm going to show you how the box, okay, remains intact. So they've put trips over here. Remember earlier that nickel was between two and the end man, yes? Well, now to keep the box intact, most of Mike and Will aren't going to move. They use the front. Now the nickel is going to apex three in the end man. Okay? The jack, we've done 97 different things with the jack. The jack, he can still play the two-by-two two game, or we can do what we call a hammer tag. Hammer is our fancy word for playing a heavy five technique. Okay? We've done that. All right, I get to the safeties here in a little bit. But notice that the box hasn't moved. Those two in the front didn't move, yes? The nickel, he didn't move. His rule still stays the same. Like, well, coach, you got one, two, three. True. Earlier you said two. But in this set, in this formation, we're not counting him anymore. Yes, I know. It's one, two, three. Your kids will say it's trips. Yeah, you're right. But we're playing combination of one and two. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So now you talked about, well, how do you use just with the safeties? So the safeties come down. In our terminology, we, what we call noose. And I've done some clinics over this. Noose is our fancy Q term that means we're going to bring the safeties on both sides. Okay. And we're going to play, again, a quarters type idea on, again, two and three or one and two, depending on how you want to teach your kids. Right. Okay, so there's one way we do it. Again, now you're like, I get it. What about over here? You're telling the corner, good luck one-on-one. -on -one. Yes and no. Really, really love it if the ball's on the hatch, right? Now we can do what we call a walk technique, okay? Walk is our term that tells our jack to walk out and make it look like an inside track corner, okay? He's still the C-gap player. His rule is still intact. Backs away, so it's three by one plus, trips plus. I get that, what I'll become. I become the trigger player. Okay. Now, if we walk in and we say, listen, we, we feel good about our one-on-one -on -one matchup. Hey, corner, just lock up down and we'll play the four-man rush game. Okay. So here is our fate. I say our favorite. Here's our first one. Because why? The box stays intact. We're still four over three concept. One, two, three, four over their three, right? To, I say quads. One, two, three, four, the back being quad, right? If they shoot the back, right? And they do some type of, of three-man snag or, or um, concept game. Now it just becomes push. The nickel pushes the back. The mic pushes the three. He becomes the nickel, okay? Just as if you taught what? Two by two quarters, okay? Also, the run fit stay the same. Okay, the run fit stay the same because why? We move the backers when they were two by two. No, right? So their keys, their run fits are all the same. Talking about the Mike and Will, two inside backers, right? So again, and I'll show you as I go two by two. Right. Notice that the box. As it moves, and I draw trips. Notice again, we adjusted with the safeties. Okay, so to these guys, well, I should do 
all those, it's all the same as two by two. Right? Now I get it. No OCs over there going, yeah, play one on one. Weakness. It all has weaknesses. You got to figure out what the weakness is. The run game ain't the weakness. It's that guy over there. Okay. Now, you say, Coach, what's, you know, how do you combat it then? Okay. You've run this, this concept. And so the second one we like, the second insult to trips. Okay. And people call it, you know, it's nothing fancy. Everybody runs it, guys. It's a funny thing that, that you haven't seen before. Okay. Is. We're now, we're playing special or what we call lock. Okay, again, it's still the quarters idea, right? Now we're playing quarters or, or, or palms or whatever off three and two. Again, I'm not showing anything you haven't seen, but again, we're still one, two, three, four over one, two, three. Okay, we good? Notice the front didn't change. B gap, A gap, B gap. Again, you can create the four-man rush with the jack. We dropped him. We brushed him. done all sorts of things with him. Okay? We've got the mic in the C and the wheels the other A. Okay? Here's your plus one, your extra, your plus one. Coach, how do you figure? Because when we run this, let's say we the reason we can use the free safety is extra because we're not playing solo or poach, right? We're not poaching. That guy on three, talking about the free safety, which everybody does. Solo post, it's all the same term, right? And we do it. I mean, it, it's in our install. Okay, we run it. But we want to take the stress off, okay, and use that guy as, the, as a fit player. Okay, he doesn't have to carry three vertical. There's your three vertical player. And okay? now over here, it's really, really great. Why do you do it? Because, number one, you can set hard edge if you want and four-man rush the jack. Two, you can do all the things over here. You know, you can invert under over. You can trap over under. Okay. We've done it to where we bracketed, meaning we have played man. Like I say two man. Like we have bracketed that guy and killed the back with the jack. We've done that too. Okay. We've done all the things over here. And those are just a few of them. We've even done this. We did this one night. Where we walk, like we said, that walk turn. So we walk the jack and we use the free safety as the invert player. Okay. And one of the reasons we did that is because, well, number one, it looks walking. I mean, he's inside trap corner, right? And two was because you're not going to count for that guy. Like you're going to tell your, your, your tackle, you're going to track all the way to the free safety, right? For us, that was a good matchup. Okay, again, we're going to play the double, the four five, right? And even if you got speed options, there's one, there's two. We felt good about it, right? So, again, you can do all sorts of things to that to, to here. And another thing that, that we've started to teach the past couple of years, okay, is within this, you know, and, hey, we zone match, guys. We zone match, zone match, zone match. You know, and I know there's that whole zone match first man match conversation out there, right? We got to where the mic can become like a man matcher if the back's away. And what I mean by that, the back's plus and he shoots with the mic's got to take. Okay? If the back's away, it's what we call trips minus. That doesn't have a threat of four. Right? So now the mic, he can play three vertical. Okay? Or whatever kind of, so if three's out, now I can expand all the way to play two vertical. So now the nickel would play three, the safety's got two, and the mic's going to carry. Okay, again, that's based off where is four, or should I say where is not four, right? So, again, those are our two, um, our two, I want to say favorites. Those are our two day one, day two installs that we're going to run. Like I said, we have solo. Solo is that thing where we run it, we use it, you know, or poach, whatever you want to call it. But you got to use the free safety on free bird, you know. But, oh, yeah, you might be extra in the run game. We, I didn't like that. We run it. I would rather play either noose and play seven in the box, okay, or play what we call special lock, whatever you want to call it, and use the free safety to seven in the box and still be able to cut because at least, at least for me, I still use the free safety to cut one. Like if I know ready to go is past, I can take my eyes to one. 
Or, hey, a lot of offenses, they've gotten really, really smart, and they push their stud, they put him at one, they put him at three, they put him at two. Well, now what can that free safety do? He can stand over the ball, become a run fitter if he needs to, but it's pass. Now I can cut three over there because it plays like what? It plays like solo. Even though we're playing lock the trips with the nickel strong mic, that free safety, whenever they got to do, and I talk about this, we make what's called a jersey call. I mean, we're going to call coverage based off where the jersey, where the dude is. Okay. Um, so, like I said, those are our first two. But the lock one, the second one I showed you, the, all the intricacies and all the stuff you do out of it is the stuff that we rep. I mean, we rep it. Okay. So, um, those are our, say, first two within the family. <laughs> so, how we, how we play trips. Does it change? Does your ideology change when it turns into like, uh, you know, we see a ton of fullbacks here in in the frozen tundra in northern in Minnesota yeah. in the northern Midwest. So we see a fullback almost ninety five percent of the time. So does that change? Or even if they create a three man surface, right? So we'll see Trey a little bit, but we'll see it with the fullback instead, right? So he'll be off the line of scrimmage because they like to use him in the run game, right? As a puller, as a mover, as a double team, or all of the above. Yeah. So do you see that they'll, they'll take them to the flats in the, in the play action, the boot game, and things like that? Does that change your ideology, or do you do you would you change where you put the jack? Would you? I mean, I know you're going to put him away from him, right? Because now it's at the back. Is it the fullback you're adjusting off of? Here we go. You know, here we go again. Is we've done it a hundred ways, right? I, I'm joking when I say a hundred, okay? But you know, like our and I, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking like two back sniffer, yes? Yep. yep. If you can hear my son, Scott Hoffman. Hi, buddy. I, I'll be with you in a little bit, buddy. Okay. So, I'm, let's just start. I'm assuming you're talking this, yes? Yep, yep. So, okay. All right. So, for us, I would assume your, your four I, zero, four I does not, does it adjust? So to start, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to remain the same. I know lots of guys will give the whole, you know, a random Cinco call, right? You know, I know he'll move into a five. And we have. We can. We, we will. But, again, let's day one. I want to get aligned to everything off the base front, right? Because, again, what did I say earlier? Before down, I'm tired of parting the front. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm sick of it. I'm tired of doing all this stuff. I'm, I'm tired of canceling bubbles, Okay. So we're going to keep the same 4i, 0i, you know, B, A, B, obviously, right? We're going to hammer down the jack again. So he's going to become the glorified nine technique, okay? The free safety is going to become our C-gap player, okay? And he's what we call C7. C7 is a fancy term for I'm in the C-gap at seven yards flat foot, okay? Reading my indicator, all right? Yes, weakness, I know. You're looking out there going, hey, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah, we're three over two here. Corner strong nickel playing some type of quarters idea on one and two. Okay, so this is how we would align day one. Obviously, you want to say two by two, right? Because, hey, what the sniffer, you talk about it, three-man surface. What if the sniffer just steps up, you know, half a foot? It doesn't change. Okay, now. Now, and here for us, okay, pre-snap, right? let me read it, reiterate, pre-snap, this and this are the same. Okay, now I get it. That's two back run game. That's one back run game. Post-snap, I understand. But when it comes to pre-snap, I don't want to tell my kids, hey, you might do this and you might do that. Now, we have calls where, hey, you know, yes, we can put him inside. He's the D-gap player. How about the free safety? We've done it to where, hey, you know, we're going to do what we call a knife technique, what we call knife, where we're going we're to stun him to a, you know, inside, right? But from base day one defense, okay, like I said, hammer is our term for playing, playing a nine or a five, depending on our surface, and our free safety is a C-gap player. Okay, now let's move him. So, okay, let's go here. We'll start over. So now, okay, 
Again, here comes the whole conversation. Are you going to move the front? Again, can, will, not going to day one. All right? So for us, this is a what? One, two, three by one formation. So what are we going to do? We're going to boss back over strong side to the three side, right? Now here, again, we're probably going to play solo or poach, right? Okay. So I'm going to solo or post that number three. Sound with the free safety. Okay. Again, you can hammer this guy, and, we, and we've even got to where we've moved him into a three, and, and he plays the five, right? Okay. We've done it to where we will put this guy in the shade. Okay. Now you're like, well, coach, you got, you know, you talk about those bubbles. You got tired of those bubbles. Yeah, you're right. I got a bubble. But where does the ball got to go? It's either got to hit a gap fast now or it's got to be outdoor. Okay. So for us, again, we'll, we will start zero, four eye, and a hammer jack. Okay. That's how it's day one start. Now, we can also do what's called a where we just let the mic and will stay in the box. Because again, this, who was the C-gap player earlier? The free safety. Who's the free, who's the C-gap player over here? The free safety. Make sense? So we can attack what we call attach the box. Okay, we can 30 the box and use him as a C-gap player. People, and I know, offense coordinator is going mainly, and I got a one-on-one, -on -one, agree. And two, you're making your safety be the be the CF player. True. However, he ain't at 12 yards like y'all want to draw him on Twitter. Okay? He's not worried about one and two. He's playing the vertical of three. And, again, he's wearing, like, number 84. Okay? He is the three vertical player at C7 using flat foot footwork. Okay? We're not pedaling. He, again, you know, I love it. It's when and I talked about this is – Offensive coordinators, they love to draw that guy there. They draw 11, but where's that guy at? He's like 14 yards deep. Why? He's part of the fit. So I said, here. If they're at five, he's a seven. Right? <laughs> That's the second way we've done it. Okay, the third way we've done it is we've made a travel call. Okay? Travel tells, well, guess who? To travel. Right? Now, and you can do different things with this if you want. We've done it to where we make the mic and wheel go opposite. So you're zero fifty, right? And have the free safety stack in the middle. We've also had to where we played mic wheel 30 and we've inverted the safety into the C into the C gap. We've done that too. Okay. So this is I say the third. This is one of our answers. Okay, the plan three man surface. You know, when I say tight end or sniffer, it's the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Okay, now you know, and notice what have I not done? I haven't moved the front, I haven't stunned the front, I haven't slammed the front. I've adjusted everything with either the backers or the free safety. Okay. You know, and lots of people say, well, why don't, why don't you do that? You know, what? Because, again, this right here. Okay. But now it's what? It's gap outfits, man. Okay. And it's what? Angles are easy. The angles are really, really easy. Okay. And so my argument is, yes, you got the ball outdoor. You may spill it or box or whatever you do with your five technique jack. Great. And then I say, okay, well, my argument is this. And let's say again, let's say it's day one. It's our base way where we're going to boss it over. Okay. Now what? Are you going to pull the guard on the back door? Like, how are you going to do it? You know what I'm saying? Are you going to try to cut that four eye? If you can do it all night, 
I'll put him in a three technique. Okay? Or you're like, yes, absolutely. We're going to pull the guard. Period. End discussion. Boom. Now you went back on the four eye. Right? Okay? Now I'm trying to hinge the four eye. Now it's one. It's two. It's three. Yes, again, I'm using the free safety. Because why? He's at seven, eight yards. He and who? The sniffer. Right? I'm using this guy. And I know the offensive coordinators out there are like, oh, man, we get to the safety. That's a great play. He's at eight yards seeing the sniffer and running with the pull on day one. Now, there's some film out there where he's not because we're game planning it. But anyway, what's the difference? What's the difference on the point of attack and playing a five shade, three, five? There's not. I'm getting the ball where I want it to go, and I'm making you make the debate on Sunday. Do we block back the four and pull the guard, right? Or do we double block back the guard and pull tackle and now you're like TH or TS, depending on who, you know, what you call your sniffer, right? Okay, but what's it look like the same? It's the same as if you're playing a shade three on this, oh, I'm sorry, it's three and a five week if you're like an under. Uh, Coach, I, mean? I, I got the last question we got here on our, on our agenda for you. Uh, is another way in terms of, of adjusting is to tight end wing formation. So that is another thing that we get a lot up here is you get your tight yeah. end and a wing, tight end and a sniffer, um, yep. a variety of different ways. So what would be your kind of, you know, alignments, adjustments to that kind of a formation. Great, 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 great. <clears throat> shout out. <laughs> shout out to one of my buddies, Adam Matheson. Uh, he, he was, I did shock war with him. Um, segue. I did shock war with him in Reno, Nevada, and Glacier. And you know anything about Adam, he's like empty, and then the same personnel he'll get in like empty wing, <laughs> like wing T principles, and then, one of my best friends in the world. He lives in Washington. I live in Texas, and we talk once a week. I mean, just awesome dude. So anyway, he made me evaluate. Because this right here, and I know you guys are, you don't see this? Dude, no. <laughs> and I know you guys up in the tundra, I, I don't envy you. You know, guys will DM me up in Wisconsin and Michigan and all that other. Coach, how do you handle this? I'm like, talk to somebody else? I mean, um, so to start, all right, now – Here's what's interesting. Okay. Here's what's interesting. All right. So I'm just going to draw X, X, and X. Yes. Corner jack, free safety for now. I'll put them here in a little bit. Now, you're going to notice, Coach, you haven't moved those guys. Nope, not going to. Okay. I get it. You're like, Coach, that's a four-man surface. Three, I'm with you. Okay. One of the things you need to learn about tight, there are some rule breakers, okay? There are some rule breakers, right? When you're on a four down, what's everybody going to do if you're on a four down? There, there, shade, and a five, right? It still doesn't solve your problem with that little thing right there, does it? Right? Or then people say, hey, all right, what we can do now is we'll play under – I'm like, okay, I'm down. But do the math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Corner slash here, I was calling it a DB. Yes? Here's your issue. What if – all three of these guys, okay, do something and they all release. You a world of hurt. You're gonna make your nine, who's probably got his hand in the dirt, peel off. You're gonna make your will go all the way through the trash. Okay, so that's my argument. Now, and I get it. Lots of people get in this formation to get four man service and run the football. Yes. So here's my argument. Here's, here's how we would align to it. Okay. Now, when I say we, it's always day one stuff. Yes, it's always day one. All right. Here we go. Four I, zero, four I, the mic, the will. So here we go. I'm going to try to solve, number one, that problem right there. 
Okay, the D gap. Like, Coach, what about inside to out, C, D, E? True. Go back through your study. Go back through your cups. Go back through your film. That one right there is the ball is, is the one you got to knife under. So what we will do is we'll put our jack and we'll knife the thing under. Okay. So is he a nine technique? The answer is yes. So coach, remember four out of nine. You're right. True. Pre snap. However, we're gonna knife that thing. Okay. Because here's what happens a lot. Go back through your cut ups of, of tight end wing stuff. What are you going? to get you're getting some type of outside zone or you're getting down down pull yes well what yep. happens a lot you may down block that guy but that jack's gonna knock off a pull now i get it on the board you're gonna say no no no, no. watch it probably not that down block the jack gets in the way of guess what that pull right there and he especially gets in the way of the back door pull. Okay. Now. So, okay, here's what we do now. And you, I'm going to put DB, DB. It's, it's whether you want to put corner there and free safety there. What, it's, you know, DB, DB, right? I've got who I got. Okay. Now, he is, again, is my C-gap player. Why? And I'll be honest with you. It's our free safety, because why? What if this guy didn't exist? What if this guy was out here? Who's my C-gap player? Who's he keying? The three-man surface guy, tight end. Right? I'm the C-gap player. Okay? Now, all right, you brought him back in. He's the wing. Now I'm making, yes, you guessed it. Oh, my gosh. This, it's crazy. Now the corner's got to play the E-gap. Okay. I mean, it is what he has to. I get it. Okay. So now, just in our terminology, okay, comment. Comment's a fancy, cute word that just says, hey, it's a, it's a, it's a four-man search, right? It's a comment side, okay? Comment C, corner, right? I become the two-by-two two off the wing, right? And it becomes like a Tampa banjo. I've got the first, you know, first out, i got the first vertical. Yes? Now, Again, okay, here we go. What if they go with three man? I know you're like, Coach, they may do this like once every five games. But that one time they run it may be against you and you haven't repped it. So here we go. Vertical, the free safety's got it. Some type of the corner's got it. There, now who's going to peel off with it? Like what I told him to do. And we've repped it since he was in seventh grade. Now I like my odds. I'm even numbers. You good? Now, here's what else we have done with this, okay? Every week, we take a quattro call with, I say every week, every time, I don't care if the team's run this one time or 47 times, and we scout them, it doesn't matter. They run this one time, we're going to take what's called a quattro call with us. Well, I'm not very smart, but I can count to four, okay? Quattro is our fancy cute term that means... Here is our auto if we get a four-man surface. Quattro, quattro. Okay. And we've done it to where, again, we've done the knife, like we've already taught him. Yes. And we're going to crash it. Make sense? Okay. Now. Now. Here's what you're about to say. Okay. You brought crash and you set the hard edge. You're right. I've, I've got what I want. Problem. I still got one, two, three, especially the back to the nub, three in a possible route. How are you going to handle this? Okay. One on the peel. Yes. The free is going to take the wing. And you can have the will do that and match it. Now you're like, Coach, ah, whoa, that's clinic talk. Okay. But again, it's a call we made for the week. Now, the easier route is what? Chase it, spin it, and box the post. 
So, Coach, what if you call it's dead? Coach, what if you call it's dead? Quattro tells us what? One, two, three, four, and Quattro means this week we're going to run name your blitz, name your whatever, to the four side. Does that make sense? So here's our quattro call. But, Coach, you call, mm -mm. So anyway, what I'm telling you, there are some absolutes. There are some absolutes that are rule breakers. Sorry, you tight front guys, there are. If you don't know them, you better learn them. Quattro is one of those. You better have an auto. And there's lots of autos. I'm mean, look. Look, one of the autos, do that, do that, do that. Slant to the four-man side. And, okay, great. Done. But I'm giving you one of our favorite quattros here. Now, Coach, as we kind of wrap things up here, um, if – Coaches have watched this clinic here and listened to this, and they're and they're wanting more information from you. Let them know how they get a hold of you on Twitter, or let them know where they can find yeah. more content produced by you. Yeah, sure, guys. Um, my Twitter's at Coach Gower, all one word, G O W E R. Um, you know, I, I I don't know if I'm a good follow. I tweet out stuff a lot about my family and and you know playbook or film or whatever, or, or the lake. That's really only my hobbies are, are football, the lake, and my family. I mean, really, that's, that's pretty much it. I, I don't golf. So, um, at Coach Gower, you can DM me. Um, you know, uh, I like talking ball. I'm a coach kid. Uh, I don't know how to do it. I'm not very good at it, but I don't know how to do anything else. Um, you know, so I hope I, I gave you something. Um, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on. You guys are awesome. Thank you. You know, it's – in a time of COVID, when things when things suck and things were not any good, we as football coaches we found a way. We evolved. We found Zoom, <laughs> you know. And so, uh, yes, it, it it sucked, man. I, I'm so sorry for anybody who's who's gone through COVID or whatever you know, whatever you may have been with you or your family. Um, but what's been cool is us as coaches adapting, adapting to circumstances, you know, and finding a way to meet, connect, and network, and get better. So. Um, guys, if, if I can give you something, maybe I gave you one thing. You know, I, heard, I heard from a guy at a clinic, don't go to a clinic to learn everything, go to a clinic to learn one thing. And so this, I think, is a clinic, and I hope you got something from it. So, guys, I appreciate it. Again, at Coach Gower, um, DM me. We'd love to talk.